Good to go. I'll go ahead and call the meeting to order. And uh, everyone can sort of get up at different times and grab lunch when they need to, but they're still setting that up. But we're going to call the meeting to order. And uh, I'll go around the room. Uh, Janice, do you want to start over on that side? Janice Cuthbert, Governing Board. Lamont Daniel, Dan Cook. Good morning, Eddie Marquez, Roofing Contractors Association. Rita Lou, Brad Tech International. Jeff Blake, Metal Finishers Association. Nancy Feldman, Legal. Derek Altory, South Coast AQMD. Illinois, AQMD Board Member. Fabian Wesson, South Coast AQMD. David Rothbart, Los Angeles County Sanitation Districts. Bill Lamar, Executive Director, California Small Business Alliance. Happy New Year, everybody. Paul Avila, Paul Avila Associates. Elaine Hill, South Coast AQMD. Sandra, South Coast AQMD. Al Bar, South Coast AQMD. Mr. Jerry, South Coast uh, Mike Krause, Planning Rules Manager in the Planning and Rules Division, South Coast AQMD. Mm -hmm. uh, Sean Wang, South Coast AQMD. Gary Quinn, Planning and Rules. Jill Wynott, South Coast AQMD. Very good. Mark Taylor, County San Bernardino. Omar Carlin, South Coast AQMD. Harvey, Public Solar Power Code. Tom's back there right now. Tom Rose. He's still with us. <laughs> okay, with that, uh, we'll move on to the, the minutes uh, from the December 13th meeting. Anyone have any questions on the minutes or comments? Uh, I make a motion that we accept the minutes as printed. Second. A uh, motion is second. Any opposed? So moved. All right, number three, the uh, follow-up action. Derek. Sure. Uh, first item is uh, amend the LGSBA charter to include procedures for expressing member sentiments. Nancy's going to be uh, presenting uh, something today on that. So that'll be the best check. And then the next, the last item is discuss with staff on the possibility of measuring real costs of various rules and regulations and the actual impacts through MATES program and independent survey. Uh, reached out to planning and they're going to be giving a response. So I'll provide that as soon as I get it. Very good. That's it. All right. Any other questions on anyone on that? If not, we'll look at the uh, <coughs> one number four. The uh, approval of local government small business assistance library uh, charter. Nancy. Yes. Good morning, everybody. In a few minutes, we have remaining of the morning today. Uh, if you go to attachment two to the agenda this morning, as requested, we have uh, come up with some language to revise the charter so that we can memorialize how exactly this body can make recommendations for changes or actions or policy to the governing board. So on the first page, you'll note that all we did was change uh, references to SCAQMD to South Coast uh, AQMD and to be consistent with our uh, identification going forward. We'd like everybody to refer to us as South Coast AQMD. We're really trying to get that message out. So carry that forward, if you will. Uh, but you'll notice in the blue, Font uh, further down, where under the reporting is where I memorialize exactly what we had discussed prior in terms of how to go forward to the governing board. If you just read that uh, paragraph, if it meets your approval, it is something that you should take a vote on to incorporate as part of your charter. Any amendment to the charter has to be. Uh, taken up by the governing board, and so we can advance it beyond this meeting to make that happen. Very good. So if you want to call for a vote on the language. Are there any, any questions? questions or comments on that? Read it. Yeah, thank you. I think this language is really good, and you did a really good job of capturing thank what the, the committee was trying to get across. Thank you. All right. If there's no other questions, I'll take a motion on this item. I'll move the item. Motion by Rita. Second. Second. Jeffrey? All right. Um, any opposed? So moved. I guess I, I guess okay. I have a have a question on the uh, what does the what does the administrative committee do? Can 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 they they can approve? They can reject? They can send it back to the advisory group uh, for further work or something like that sure yeah, if they have any comments or questions they could send it back to us but i'll be there to explain what's going on and why we did this and what's happened and 
I'm pretty sure that you're just 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 says to be taken to the administrative committee presumably to do something with it I think to receive it and then to forward it on to the board if needed exactly mm -hmm. yeah that's the process that is set forth in your charter everything goes through the admin committee yes yeah, right yes yeah. All right, sounds good. Yeah. So that item has been moved. Um, we're on to item number six, discussions uh, with the updates on best book and pro technology guidelines. Oh, huh? I'm sorry, number five, I missed that. The uh, adoption of the COVID Children's Group uh, accomplishments and goals. There. So um, in your packet, what you received is the 2019 accomplishments and proposed 2020 goals. Uh, any additions you would like? I think we heard from a couple of members that they wanted some stuff added to it so any questions on that i did have a question i saw the item 12 was added uh probably based on what i was asking for but a, a slight clarification on what the item is that i'm concerned about it would not be the updated oeha methods for estimating cancer risks okay. but the proposed list of 2588 compounds that are going to be issued by CARB and OEHA, and the subsequent reporting of those compounds via CARB CTR, which is a major development that's going on that will impact all other districts in California. So it'd be nice to keep track of that. Okay, so we'll make that change. Yeah. And if it's okay, um, we'll send it over to you so that way I don't hold this item over sure. another month. Just go ahead and approve it as long as. And if, you're not happy with it, we can just make that bring it back. Perfect. Yeah, Thank back. you. Okay. So with those changes, any other comments or questions? We'll look for a motion then. So move. Second. So a motion a second. Any opposed? So move. move. All right. Now on to item number six. Sorry. Updates on best bill control activities. Alfonso. Thank you, Chair Benoit, and good afternoon. Good afternoon, everybody. I'll be providing a, uh, a summary on, on the updates we did to our back guidelines last year. Uh, these uh, covered uh, all four parts of the uh, guidelines, uh, and they based on uh, the recent rule changes, both uh, equity rules, state and federal, and the intent is really to reflect the current requirements with the future updates that are planned, and uh, we did uh, address the criteria and the requirements for establishing minor source back. Uh, the overview section is a section of the guidelines that uh, uh, discusses the historical background of the guidelines and, and a brief introduction and applicability. In this section, we added the uh, policy that, to, that prevents the circumvention of BAC. A lot of facilities were coming to us with, uh, with 0 0.9, 0 0.95 pounds per day increases of, of criteria pollutants, and BAC is, uh, applies at one or greater pounds per day, so a facility can come back in one year, with uh, three uh, modifications that would be over a pound, two pounds a day, and yet they're never subject to back. Well, this this uh, policy uh, would uh, stop that and, and have a, a, a five-year period in which this be subject to back and the cumulative increases that, uh, to uh, uh, prevent any any uh, circumvention of back. Uh, the Part A and Part C are policy uh, sections uh, for both major and minor source uh, back. And we included, uh, by reference, the AKMD's uh, energy-related policy that uh, that addresses uh, NOx emissions specifically for uh, major sources such as uh, uh, power stations. Uh, we also updated, the, as we do every time, the cost, the maximum cost effectiveness values we have uh, in in the uh, guidelines. That those are when. Uh, we uh, update the guidelines, we publish them, but we always keep on our webpage the latest uh, costs uh, that are updated every quarter based on the Marshall and Swift Index. Uh, as you know, uh, the BAC guidelines is a living document that, that uh, changes uh, continuously, and when we uh, identify uh, determinations that are out of date, uh, in other words, uh, technology is progressing where new lower emitting uh, technologies have been permitted and, and are achieved in practice. We always update that and we delete uh, older uh, determinations that, that no longer uh, represent what's uh, currently in, in the industry and being permitted. So these lists, those technologies that we uh, deleted, uh, that were updated with newer uh, up-to-date uh, controls or, or lower emissions. Uh, in part, yes. I have a question for you. Yes. Let's use your two examples, boilers and ovens, okay? Uh, the next 
I mean, if we go Pre back, to, uh, go back to slide. There you go. Yes. So what? In a case scenario where, let's say, a boiler can't be removed because it's in a specialized location on an older building, and even though it's been repaired, it's still functioning, but the new <coughs> technology can't replace it, and it's just going on and on and on because of the size area. See, there's just no room for expansion. What's this, what happens in that case? If I understand this correctly, you're saying a boiler is in a location that needs to be replaced. No, no, no. It cannot be replaced. No, it cannot be replaced. And to meet the current uh, requirements. Right, but it, it can be repaired. It's being repaired, uh, let's say, periodically every six or seven years by replacing the parts. And it works, but it can't be replaced. There's not enough room in the new technology for bigger tanks, even though they'll last forever. What happens in the well, as long as, as new technology is being applied or retrofitted, yeah. it complies with BAC or, right. or yeah. any other applicable rule, that, that's fine. Okay. Yeah. That's I mean, a BAC applies whenever a newer modified piece of equipment has a net emission increase okay. of criteria pollutants. Okay. If you have an existing piece of equipment that's currently operating and complies with our rules and regulations, uh, unless a new rule is adopted or amended that would uh, apply to that piece right. of equipment, then they have a future compliance date. Thank you. Thanks. As I mentioned, uh, these are uh, major source categories that we updated, uh, uh, storage tank and soil vapor extraction. These are categories that before we didn't have in our uh, major source uh, determinations, uh, and we added them. We, we always tried to add new determinations that have never been uh, listed or uh, ones that are updating what's been there for a long time. Yeah, so, I, yes. I just wanted to clarify this lithographic printer on your slide five, is, is that a lithographic press? Oh, uh, you're ahead of me right now on the slide five. <laughs> on, on six? Five. No, on five. He's five. About oh, five, I'm sorry, on five. The list the that you have? Oh, the list. Of the equipment list. That, that, that's a lithographic press, right? Uh, yes. Yes, I'm sorry. Yes, of course. Okay. That's correct. Thank you. Yeah, that printer press. Thank you for correcting it, John. No, I, I just I just want to make sure. Yes, that's exactly right. Make that correction. And uh, again, uh, this time we wanted to update uh, the categories of gas turbines, both natural gas fired and digester gas fired or uh, lambo gas fired. Uh, it's been many years since we updated determinations on those categories and and we uh, identified the cheap impacts of technologies that are now achieving, as you can see, low levels of, of, of emissions. So we listed them. Uh, again, uh, more information on uh, uh, portable engines and uh, emergency fire pumps uh, that were uh, um, located at major sources, which we considered layer, lower CO2 emission rate. Terminations. Uh, uh, this was uh, in addition to identifying technologies that are permitted within our district. We also look out beyond our district. For example, this is a case of a uh, gas turbine, combined cycle, a large combined cycle gas turbine that was uh, brought to our attention, was permitted in the state of Virginia, and achieved very impressive uh, the two ppm that we currently uh, wow. have. But it went down to 1.5 ppm carbon monoxide, which is very impressive. Without and uh, yeah, without uh, duct. So uh, when that is it's in a technology been achieved in practice, we recognize that technology and it's a, at a major source. So we uh, include it in our guidelines to reflect uh, nationwide uh, the what level of control is being achieved for these technologies. Uh, Part D is our minor source uh, section that we list all the minor source technologies. Here we're updating similar uh, uh, thermal oxidizer uh, that uh, applies to various applications uh, that's achieving now 30 ppm NOx. That's for the burner only emissions. Uh, composting, deep fried fire, all these different categories. We're updating either because a new rule has been adopted or amended and reflects the latest current fact. Uh, again, uh, more minor source. Uh, we had some once in a while, we're, we're not perfect. Uh, there'll be some things like uh, Mr. Lamar just uh, identified that we uh, uh, left out or, 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 or uh, there was a typo. Uh, these are the categories that we went back to make sure that uh, we are providing the public consistent and correct information. So we corrected these categories of, of equipment that, that uh, uh, had information that was not correct. Uh, rule 47 is our, uh, I guess, Knox rule. And, and uh, this rule uh, brought forth uh, a very uh, you know, um, low emission requirements for different types of technologies. Uh, to be consistent, uh, and when a rule is adopted and, and, and has been uh, uh, 
implemented. If that applies to any of the technologies that we have listed in the back guidelines, we reference that rule as being back because that is a current requirement. And back can always uh, be more expensive than the rule, but in these cases, the rule itself is considered back. So these lists of different technologies that we incorporated them uh, with compliance with Rule 47 as being back. Uh, the uh, back uh, scientific review committee is a committee that was adopted by the board in, in the early uh, mid 90s, and it was really to to uh, increase the public participation. And uh, we had a charter uh, established about two, three years ago. And there was a uh, misunderstanding that uh, when the charter would meet and when we would bring uh, proposals to the uh, to the state resource committee. Well, uh, this was a, uh, a uh, amendment to that charter to state that we will bring a uh, proposed updates of the back islands to the to the center, to the uh, state resource committee. But we have actually gone to uh, several public. Uh, meetings with uh, stakeholders, and uh, we were presented our proposed updates to the guidelines, and that was really what we did uh, on that charter. The charter identifies the membership, how the membership is done, and, and how many members uh, uh, are involved in, in the back scientific review committee, which meets uh, periodically. Yes, sir. Alfonso, can you go back one square or one, one uh, slide? Okay, slide chart. That's right. Okay, uh, enlighten me here. Uh, yes. What is a fish reduction cooker? What is that? Fish reduction cooker is, uh, <laughs> there are not many around in our area, but that's what they, they, they you bring fish meal, yeah. and, and you basically like, boil, you boil it. Now let's say about a 20 pound, a 20 pound pack of fish, or 100 pounds of fish, and you boil it. That they is? used to, to boil them, and to make other other food products, whether okay. it's, it's uh, fish food or things like that. Oh, so that's not, that's just like an uh, ancillary piece of equipment. Yeah, and it's heated, because since it's heated with a, with a burner, yeah. burner has to meet the, the 30 ppm uh, nonsense. Got it. Thank you. Fish sauna. <laughs> Fish sauna. <laughs> Something like that. Okay. And uh, again, we always, uh, every time, we try, strive to, to keep our back guidelines user friendly. So we're always looking for, for new ways. We, we take uh, uh, suggestions, input, and we have our own uh, suggestions that we do to make sure the guidelines are, are a user friendly uh, uh, type of, of, of a uh, resource. That the public and, and the regular community can use to uh, see what app back applies to them, and uh, as you can see, we did a uh, added a search links uh, to make it easier. Uh, if you have a piece of equipment, you can type in your piece of equipment. It, it takes you right to the uh, the right uh, back determination. Now, yes. on that subject, as a member of the back SRC, thank you for doing all that working sure. with us. A question on the making the guidelines easier to follow. Was there anything else beyond those items that we're going to work on? Because the, the actual guidance itself had some inconsistencies we talked about, and I don't know if we fixed them. Inconsistencies? Uh, the, as far as like the clean fuels policy and sort of when things are required, there was some ambiguity we were well, the talking clean fuels about. policy we did uh, last time, uh, and in fact, we added the uh, AQMD uh, Clean energy policy, right. and the clean fuels policy uh, was adopted, uh, was amended, I think, two, three years ago. Right, right. But it, it, overall, is there anything else we're going to change in the guidelines themselves to make them easier to read and follow? Uh, well, besides uh, uh, any content that is identified that's outdated, we, we address, and uh, we'll talk about. We have a. I was going to say, take a look at it. Yeah, please take. But I think we addressed everything okay. the committee brought up, and we have an. Uh, Later on, I'll talk about. We have up, the next upcoming uh, back SRC meeting is scheduled for the 25th of February, and we'll be sending out the uh, notice soon. And when? The 25th. 25th. Yeah, I notice is coming out soon. Oh, okay. uh, about that. Yeah, you folks will receive it. And key issues that that we uh, 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 address: transparency. Uh, at minimum, every time we update the back guidelines, we have a minimum, minimum of three public. Back scientific review committee meetings. The first meeting is to have like a scoping session to present to the public and the back RC committee on our proposed updates to the guidelines. We get input uh, based on that input, uh, uh, and that's the input we get not only from the committee, uh, from our internal staff, uh, engineering and compliance, uh, permitting, our rule staff, and things that, that they, they feel we should be uh, updating our guidelines. And once we have the meeting, we have a, a follow up second meeting where we provide more detailed information on proposed updates to the back guidelines. At that point, we provide a 30-day public comment period uh, on our proposed updates to the guidelines, and then we have a third uh, meeting 
uh, to uh, go over uh, our response to comments and, and what we're going to move forward to uh, for board approval and for State Resource Committee uh, review and approval also. Uh, uh, we got input from uh, the committee that the staff uh, review the future major and minor uh, determinations for state specific applicability and we agreed completely based on operation and cost. Uh, we know that back is a case specific type of, 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 uh, of an issue and, and, and uh, what back is for the certain process or equipment uh, can, unless you have technology transfer, there's certain limitations in how you can really apply back across the board. So we're definitely um, uh, paying attention to that. Permitting policy, a lot of times uh, uh, at our meetings we get uh, permitting policy type questions and after address, we cannot address those permitting type questions at, 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 at that uh, um, uh, uh, forum, but we do our best to, to uh, refer individuals to the right uh, staff that can address those questions. Now for kind of the second item, with just before we had routine meetings, there was a long period of time where we weren't updating the back determinations yes. and we're now catching up yes. and getting those determinations published and going through the SRC. My question really is, are we still catching up? Because when I get, try to get a permit for a piece of equipment, it still is kind of the haggling I've described about. When you go in for a permit, you go to the permit engineer, it isn't clear what backed is. So it feels like we're still catching up rather than reviewing existing technology and providing feedback before it's listed in the permit. Yeah, as you know, uh, uh, and I mentioned before in the meetings, that my, my dream is to have a BACT guidelines that is the most complete and contains, uh, includes all, all the permitted equipment under the sun out there. Uh, obviously, there's some cases come up where certain unique pieces of equipment are not included in our guidelines. In those cases, we, we try to update them. And when we bring a uh, proposed updates to the to the board, uh, if we were to bring a 10-page uh, list of things that we're going to do, we have to like uh, prioritize the technologies that, that are uh, engineering permitting uh, or the public uh, things are more. As we as SRC reviews the determinations, there isn't a requirement to go to the board to get those approved, is there? Yes, mm -hmm. by state law, if, if we're going to propose new updates to the minor source, that uh, state law requires us to go to the board for if, approval. If it's listed in the guide, I'm sort of separating the permitting process from the guidelines. So permitting is saying this is what we deem to be backed, but it hasn't gone through the back to SRC. It seems like it's backwards. I know you're talking about major source or minor source? Oh. Well, I mean, engineering, if they've done the cost analysis, there's a section in, in the guidelines we can discuss later that, that provides a process that in those cases where you have somebody brings a piece of equipment, you don't see it anywhere listed in our guidelines. But you need to get it permitted and you need to establish what back is for that piece of equipment. Uh, they can follow the steps of identifying, you know, the, the, the top down cost analysis. I mean, what's out there that can be done? And, and if it's a minor source, it's a cost effective. Submit a cost effective analysis. If it's a major source, uh, and if somebody has done it in the operation for six months, that by, by, by EPA policy it is there. But uh, we're working with engineering to make sure. That we're consistent on that message and to the public. What I was leading towards is yeah. We should... We've been working with Amir and and, and and the engineering permitting to make sure that that is that message, like you mentioned, is going to be consistent and, and the process is going to be consistent. But thanks for bringing it up. Okay, thank you. And that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Okay. Any other questions? David? Yes. Just to follow up on David's question. So what you are saying is that if you had something that hadn't gone to the board for approval as part of the <coughs> guidelines that you present, the updates, engineering would still could implement something as backed that was not included in what the presentation to the board Well, was. I mean, uh, uh, and I gotta, again, I got to differentiate between major source layer and minor source. <coughs> engineering, they're aware that if, if layer is, is, is they're reviewing something for layer, major source. That is le uh, more of a, if it's a cheap in practice, there's less requirements to establish cost uh, for minor source. Uh, they would go to the cost analysis also on a case by case. In those cases, we will work with them. And if there's a determination to be done for the cheap in practice, uh, we'll work with them to make sure we bring it up to the next uh, back update. But that is, uh, like I mentioned today, it's something that we're discussing with, with engineering to make sure that message is consistent across the board. 
Okay. And I just wanted to commend you and, and your staff for the update process and, you know, having this public process. I know for many years, for over a decade, the committee had no meetings, and now we're having regular meetings. So thank you. There's you been a huge, huge improvement. Thank you for your input. I mean, the committee's been, the public has been really good in, in giving us feedback on what we're proposing. And, and it's, like I said, it's a living document. We're working on it to make it better every day. And we'll continue. Yeah. Yes. Question. We're, we're the we're, we're back, back SCR committee. Is there going to be a BART committee somewhere? I don't know if I'm, I'm the one to answer that question. <laughs> so BART has established the rule, and so every time we bring a rule forward, uh, we are usually in that rule establishing BART. So every rule has a working group. That is the BART committee for that particular rule. And maybe the bill is alluding to the 617 process? Yeah. So 617 is kind of out of our jurisdiction. CARB is looking at that. So it's more so of a coordination issue. So what they're doing is they're, they're looking through all the district rules throughout the state, and we're coordinating with them to pull out BARC levels and BARC information from existing rules. Um, and that's they have a state mandate to compile all that. <coughs> or their BARC clearinghouse or whatever. Mm -hmm. And and I was actually going to ask a question following up on that regarding ARB because now ARB came out with their BACT parked clearinghouse. How are you incorporating that in? We have been the uh, since last year working with ARB on, on uh, regular uh, conference calls because, uh, as you know, AB six seventeen has uh, legislation that requires them to establish a uh, back park clearing technology clearinghouse, mm -hmm. and we've been working with them and providing uh, R our determinations to make sure that when the state uh, uploads, and I think it's online now. Yes, it is. Their, yes, it is. Car, uh, their back park clearinghouse is consistent with all the other districts. It's it's, it's quite a, a, a feat because all districts, as you know, uh, are different. Uh, what's back for us might not be back for somebody in the district. So. And the categories are defined yes. differently. That's another challenge. Yes. Any questions aside? If not, uh, Harvey Edder doesn't want to speak on this item, so Harvey. Hello, Harvey Edder. I'm speaking for myself and for the Public Solar Power Coalition. Solar energy varies in intensity from one to five times anywhere on the planet. It's available for BART and back. It's been ignored by this district, CARB, the Federal Environmental Protection Agency. Nothing's done with it. We brought this up, we've litigated over the decades, it's been purged, nothing's been done. We brought to you the Israelis built the first solar power plants out here 30, 40 years ago. They've been operating for that long. They built they built a half a megawatt in, in Israel before, and it goes back to a, high, a, a system that was built uh, in, in Egypt 100 years ago, 150 years ago. This stuff is around, it's proven, the Sunshot program's proven it, we put it in the record, we're trying to update that, you do nothing about it, this is outrageous, it's illegal, it's bad policy, it's insanity given that we're in the sixth extinction and we're going to wipe ourselves and, and the rest of uh, whatever's going on on this rock out. I can't talk no more. I'm pissed. All right. Well, with that, we're going to the, uh, the next item. Item number seven. The, I would uh, like to hear some comment. Why, why, why is not part of BART? Why, why has it been ignored? All right. <coughs> John Wayne. John Wayne. John Wayne. Sean. Sean. <laughs> 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 Handing out props today. Thank you. Didn't want to hand them out too early. 
You know, all you go-getters would get a step ahead. <laughs> <Short break. laughs> <Don't count that. laughs> We're doing role reversals today. Yeah, so so <laughs> Sean's presenting, and I'm playing his band of lights. Yeah, very good. <laughs> all right. All right. So while Mike is um, passing out the props, um, I'm going to give a quick update on the outreach efforts that we currently have for Rule 1147. And uh, to start with some quick background, uh, Rule M47 applies to uh, miscellaneous combustion equipment that, uh, for equipment that are currently not specifically required to comply with any NOx emission limits from any district uh, regulatory regulation 11 rule. The rule was first adopted back in 2008, and it was amended uh, for the first time in 2011 to respond to uh, compliance challenges. And in 2017, uh, staff conducted a technology assessment for uh, quote unquote low use equipment, which are equipment that uh, emit less than one pound NOx per day, and it was reviewed by a third party. And following that, uh, the rule was once again amended in 2017 to reflect the recommendations from the technology assessment. And uh, during that time, uh, the board uh, directed staff to uh, conduct additional public outreach. And at, right now, uh, Rule 1147 is going through rule amendment for the uh, reclaim sunset, or reclaim transition. And from the 2017 uh, board resolution, uh, the governing board directed staff to uh, conduct outreach and uh, help guide facilities comply with the Rule 1147 requirements. And staff has developed a two-phase approach, uh, phase one being the compliance pamphlets that are currently available. And uh, phase two would be a, a more comprehensive guidance document. Uh, as of right now, uh, per agreement with uh, key stakeholders, the guidance document is being delayed until the current rulemaking is completed to uh, allow for a more up-to-date guidance. Yes? Sure. Um, Give me a, a ballpark idea of what kind of machinery we're talking about. It's really smaller piece of equipment, correct? The technology assessment uh, done in 2017 focused more on the lower emission with, and the smaller pieces of equipment. Right. However, the rule doesn't have a ceiling as to how large the equipment can be. <laughs> on the smaller equipment, <coughs> give me an idea. Just A paint spray booth. Okay. A small automotive paint spray booth. Okay. And for the compliance pamphlet that is the phase one of the uh, public outreach, uh, we currently have three versions, one for the uh, greater than one pound per day equipment, one for the less than one pound per day, and one specifically for uh, paint spray booths. <laughs> And uh, right now, the English versions are available. However, the Spanish version is um, expected to be released uh, in February of this year. And for the pamphlets, we have uh, frequently asked questions, a summary of the rule requirement, and some additional compliance information um, that will help facilities comply with the requirements of Rule 1147. And that is it, nice and quick. Any questions? Yes. Yeah, um, your, your slide on the board resolution, I think, is only partially correct. Uh, and I'm going back there uh, uh, in, in time. You, you developed the, the pamphlets, and you did a great job on, on that. Thank you. Uh, I, I said that in the past. And, uh, Gary commented on it too, so good. But in 2011 and in 2017, and in subsequent stationary source committee meetings, you know, I, I made the issue that I made the point uh, that there were there were several unfinished, there's some unfinished business with respect to the adoption of uh, 47. And while you've added the guidance document and put the pamphlets in. Uh, there are a couple of, of, of items that are missing here. One is to find an alternative to source testing. 
that was uh, that's that's going to be extremely expensive, especially for folks uh, in, in the automotive <coughs> industry. Uh, board member Mitchell and uh, and at that time board member Lou uh, championed that and directed staff and the executive officer <coughs> to get that done. Right. Board member Mitchell used the word immediacy uh, to do that. Uh, when this resolution was done, I think I cited 900 or 599 days since the, the rule was adopted. It's now 924 days as of today. Uh, and, and no action has been done on this, or at least none has been communicated to us. I, I can't hear you. The, I, I'm sorry, Harvey. Uh, no. Uh, the other one, the other one was to break up this monopoly uh, for the, having a single burner, uh, who's a uh, Chicago manufacturer. Uh, there's only one burner, certainly for automotive spray booths, and uh, and it was also Board Member Mitchell who uh, who suggested that uh, staff use, I think, one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Uh, in, in funds to incentivize uh, burner manufacturers to get their burners certified, and we haven't been been advised of, of any uh, of any effort or any work on on that. So th those are those are still out outstanding. Uh, with respect to uh, a guidance document and outreach, uh, I guess that's I guess that's being done or, or will be done. But those two items here are, uh, are items that uh, I will certainly bring up at, at one of the upcoming stationary source meetings when staff brings this uh, up again for uh, for up board member of board up the I just want so um, in Sean's defense that was those other two items weren't the topic of the presentation today we're asking for the outreach piece and we are fully aware of those two other board resolutions on, on the second I, I, I didn't mean to trap you, <laughs> <laughs> what you did. On, the, on the second one uh, and maybe it's a, we haven't communicated it there was an effort made right after that resolution to, to make that money available to try to certify different burners with different manufacturers and we had done that before we tried again and fail we didn't find anyone willing to come forward uh, happy to report to any group on that on that topic but we've tried in the past we tried again and we're just not finding that monopoly is an issue uh, but we, we just haven't found that other burner manufacturer yet uh, on the but we would pay to certify we have the money to pay they don't have to, we have to pay to go through the whole process but there um, are there are a lot of other burners Bill I mean uh, low knock burners is a very mature technology. I know, but not for this for this application. But for the it's it's, it's the application that's yeah. a hang up. That's why we we reached out to all of them and said, "Are you interested in this application?" Yeah, and I think the monopoly is even more so because you used to have you know two or three different manufacturers. Now it's all under Honeywell. They will all it's, it's what the Honeywell. Thing. Honeywell is the one that's over all of these other uh, burner matter burner manufacturers. In other words, they bought them out. So. That's one of the problems we have. So it's not an interest in getting into the market that you're competing with yourselves. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, on the first item, uh, at point well taken, that is an issue. And since the rule is being opened, that's one of the things we can look at yeah. over the next year uh, to see if there's some uh, you know, relief that could be provided on those source testing requirements. Yeah, and, and, and I've participated in the 1147 workshops, work, work groups, and everything, and that's fine. And I, I just gathered because you you have 1147 uh, and then 1147.1 or point two or point three. So you're only doing this uh, to process or, 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 or move the reclaim. Uh, it's a main purpose, out, but out, there's and, and then I guess you'll come back at some time in the future and then amend 1147. If you have a suggestion for other amendments other than accepting X reclaim facilities or having a part of requirements for reclaim facilities in the interim, uh, make that suggestion and we'll look into it. Well, originally 1147 had something like five or 6,000 pieces of equipment. 2,500, I think, of those were spray booths. That's correct. 
or something like that. Right. 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 Eight or nine years. <laughs> no, no, no. no. You know, you're right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, and, 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 and I think we determined that most, most of those, if not all of them, are less than a pound a day. So, uh, and then you were, you, you drew out, uh, or withdrew some uh, commercial cooking equipment, and that went into 1153.1, uh, and then some went into 222 and 290 sure. and that other. So you, I guess you've been drawing down on that 6,000, that universe. Are you going, are you going to continue to do that? Well, the number's going to go up because of reclaim services coming in. But oh, their equipment, yeah. But if you see what we're proposing for 1147.1.2.3 is looking at some divisions between the size of the equipment and also some sector-based, like the aggregate facilities. So we are we are drawing that down. I mean, it's going to get bigger because of reclaim, but then we're trying to have more specific. It's a very broad rule, which has been a source of a lot of the issues that have come up. It covers a wide array of equipment generally. So the more specific a rule is, the more we can deal with some of those issues specifically. So we are still working in that direction. So right now we're looking at the larger 1147 sources. Maybe they need their own rule with their own requirements. Uh, and we're also looking at the aggregate facilities. They, they might need their own rule with the old requirements. But I guess where I'm, 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 I guess, I guess the question I'm, I'm asking is that when you're, when you're doing these adjustments to 1147 with the point 0.1, point 0.2, and point 0.3, at some time or, or you're going to wind up with a with a different rule 1147 from the one that you adopted in 2008 or even amended in 2011. So uh, I would think that it would, it, with all of the, the treatment it's been given here, you'd have to uh, change 1147. To, Definitely in terms of applicability if we're pulling yeah, other ones out. To, to whatever it is at that yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, they're all, all those rules are on the calendar and we're working on it for this year. So, yeah. Very good. Uh, any more questions from anyone else? All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. I'm going to bring this to the meeting. All right, we have our attached uh, written report. Uh, is there any other business by our board members? Rita? Yes. Um, one announcement uh, we're going to have our Red Tech Conference March 8th through the 11th in Orlando this year. And you have airline tickets for us? Um, <laughs> well, um, I don't know. Maybe the district does. Uh, <laughs> but, you're the sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> but, and, and I'm proud to report that uh, the district has supported our RAD launch program. Uh, where we provide small grants to startups and universities throughout the country who are bringing forward the cutting edge um, applications in UV, EV, and LED technology. Uh, so thank you to the district for that. And the other thing that I wanted to comment on was that we're losing one of our board members, Carlos Rodriguez, is going on to the governing board. And I just wanted uh, to thank him for his service. He's not here today. But we definitely appreciated his contribution to the committee. Don't worry, we'll probably bring him right back onto the committee. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's true. He can come sense. back as a board right. member. It we said sense. our goodbyes and everything. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> moved. So <laughs> moved. <laughs> Let him know that he wanted here, and I uh, hope we can still make this meeting as well. Exactly. That would be great. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, we do have public comment. Harvey? <laughs> You just keep in mind, Harvey, this, this body does not make policy for the board. It's just providing input, so I'm trying to take out all the uh, fire and brimstone on us here, okay? Okay. All right. Um, this is local government and small business. <clears throat> we, we were told three, four years ago by a senior staff to contact uh, the state and the governor's office about doing small businesses and integrating them into what, what we wanted to do. 
and uh, this should be done by this committee. There should be funding available. Uh, also, we're talking about doing a thing about trees. They want to plant like a billion trees in 10 years. We did living Christmas trees for the White House two years ago. It was like the 50th anniversary of, of uh, Earth Day. We met the first administrator of EPA, uh, 20 foot uh, blue spruce, put in a home for homeless children in DC. Uh, so accepted by uh, Ford Nixon by Ruckel's house was also part of the Saturday Night Massacre. Um, there needs to be, in all local governments, district heating and cooling. And that has to be planned and put in now. In solar thermal, which is two, three times more efficient than PV, uh, has to be looked at with doing this as well as PV. Um, they had 14,000 people die in 2003 from a heat wave in France. This stuff isn't going away. It needs to be done. It needs to be done at the district. This is where the rubber hits the road. Um, this thing about, oh, we got a boiler here. Oh, we can't get to it. We run lines there. We got, we got the heat. We, got, we can do this stuff. Every application that comes in, everything that goes through, we review through technical committees and everything has to be done with this in mind. Everything's got to be rewritten. It's got to be done now. Um, the CCAs, I was at their meeting with the Clean Energy Alliance, Ventura, LA County, and 29 cities. The third largest electric provider in the state. Edison's good meter. Okay, they got a time of use rate. They got PCIA, they're putting everything in the kitchen sink in there, including they're putting nuclear in there. When they're hiding, they're not, they're not dealing with the nuclear waste and closing the cycle. They say they're greenhouse gas. It doesn't have implications from that. They are going bankrupt. They're being put out of business by the IOUs. It was a bad concept 20 years ago when pg e was going bankrupt and they were going to buy all of the T&D system for the state for less than $3 billion. We spent many times that, 10, 100 times that, with these fires and everything else and buying power. And we should just condemn the TND system. San Francisco wants to spend two and a half million billion to buy the system. We've already paid for it. It should be condemned. We cannot have the, 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 this conflict of interest with short term profit monetization and, and the IOUs and all, all of these, these costs. Thank you, sorry. Sorry. Thank you for your comments. All right, our next meeting, uh, keep it clear in your calendar for Valentine's Day, February 14th. You're kidding. <laughs> you won't, you won't entertain a motion to uh, uh -huh. cancel the meeting if you like. Council, to you guys. Oh. Well, <laughs> <I'm lying. laughs> it's Valentine's Day, so I'll see. Anti the Valentine's Day. Wow. I'm not, I'm not a <laughs> romantic. Oh, oh. All right, so seeing no romantics in the room to make <laughs> All right, well, we'll have our next meeting. You're back here on February 14th, 11 30. Uh, Derek, you have candy sport. A little hard. Make sure they're sugar free. <laughs> sugar free.